Three, two, one. Daybreaks and aches. I'll be running when my feet hit the ground. Welcome to From One Mom to Another with Cindy Anderson. I subscribe to the belief that women need women. As a mother of seven, she is versed in all aspects of the triumphs, joys, and challenges of parenting. Tap into your own strengths and trust that you are the best mother your children ever had. And give yourself some credit. Take some time to breathe. You are doing better than you think. Now here's Cindy. You are all doing better than you think. This is Cindy Anderson from One Mom to Another. Today, Stephanie and I are going to talk about COVID-19 sheltering in place, and mothering in a world that has turned upside down. A woman by the name of Joy D. Jones said, Women wear many hats, but it is impossible and unnecessary to wear them all at once. Instead, we have to focus on which to wear that day. I love that. Every day there is a list of things to do, all seemingly important. And part of being a mother is trying to figure out some sort of balance. And now things have become incredibly more complicated. We are in COVID in a COVID-19 pandemic, and it seems that there are more hats than ever that moms are having to wear. You know, life has changed, and the hats that we wear um, or have to put on have changed also. When change happens in our lives, we have our friends and our family, people who have gone through uh, what we're going through already to kind of help us through it. But now everybody's going through it, and we're all going through it for the first time, and none of us have ever, <laughs> you know, it, it. it's almost like if your house caught on fire and you ran out and you looked around to get your neighbors and friends to help you put the fire out. And then you look right. and your whole block is on fire. It's, yes. And you realize yes. Oh, no one knows who is available to, to help. help. So. Yeah. Everybody's trying to figure this out and everybody's trying to put their own house fire out. And, you know, to extend that, not only neighborhoods, cities, our whole country, country is, world. is on fire. <laughs> and how do we adjust to this change? I don't know. And 2020 is really not giving us a chance to, to adjust. No. Because, I mean, I think we started off the year with the whole continent on fire. Right. COVID and murder hornets. I'm pretty sure at some point that meteor was supposed to hit the earth. That's right. A huge dust storm on its way. Listen, earthquakes. <laughs> I mean, you, you. Yeah, and now we have the we have the dust from Africa coming. <laughs> so if twenty twenty would give us a chance, oh and I mean huge major social reforms that have, you know Oh my goodness a lot of just emotional bandwidth as well. Right. I mean, if twenty twenty would just give us a chance to breathe, maybe we yeah. would just better and faster to change, but Yeah. Every day there's something it seems like. What what are you doing to help you kind of adjust? You've got kiddos at home and <laughs> I mean, what is what does that look like? I think I mentioned in this in episode two that our family went from in March, you know, goals to thrive to goals to survive real fast. <laughs> like, That's right. <laughs> we our diet overnight began to consist of like taquitos and bagel bites and <laughs> right uh, emotional eating, Zoom meetings, and mm-hmm. you know, we just kind of found our new lows yeah like, like our baseline lows like we like okay yeah. this is this is now rock bottom as i'm trying as i'm trying to cope and figure out how i want to move my family through well, and that's fine. I mean, we can only go up from that point that's right well and i remember too when, when this first started oh two weeks i can do two weeks right i'm, I'm an introvert Right. I mean, I can do two oh, weeks. I've been training my whole life for this moment. That's right. Like, I don't have to go places. I don't have, like, yeah. games for the next, you know, for my kids for the next two weeks. Yeah. Perfect. We can do two weeks. And, and I, that's the the biggest joke because two weeks became two months. And what are, what are some things that we've had to figure out how to actually make this adjustment and right. especially helping kids to, so what, what are some things that you've actually done that has helped um, um I, I think we started amongst my friends and I uh, a Marco Polo group that we could talk to and just share feelings. You know, being able to process exactly what we are feeling with other people was huge. And you know, I looked for opportunities to laugh about things. I, I did. Yeah. I looked up COVID memes, and I thought if you can't laugh through something like never not being able to use toilet paper. 
That's right. When could, when could you laugh through a problem? That's right. I, and, yeah. When I, if you can't laugh anymore, you're done. Like you right, have to have a sense right. of humor. Right. Um, yeah. I, I hold, you know, some very deep religious views and a belief in God. And I turn to prayer a lot mm-hmm. to try to find some yeah. peace. Um, what, so I think, you know, one of the things we wanted to talk about on the podcast is helping our children adjust to change. Right. Because, right. I mean, the change uh, is hard no matter what it is. And even if it's a good change, which this certainly has not been a good change, but all change is hard to adjust. And so how do we help our children adjust to their world? I mean, they went to school one day and came home and found out they weren't going back. Right, right. And, you know, honestly, I think trying to help the kids laugh along with me at some of the different things helped to kind of take Mm -hmm. out some of the fear um and you know i have to say i don't think i realized at first how my kids were affected emotionally by this Mm -hmm. you know i was trying really hard to stay positive we were resetting new family goals which i think really helped you know we were coming up with fun activities to do during the day that could be done in our own yard or at the house to um pass the time some things we never tried before some you know uh board games, badminton, all these things that, you know, kind of get swept to the side during the school year that you can't really focus mm-hmm. on. Um, but then, you know, some of my kids are making some kind of random comments about being afraid to go to a store. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, okay, you are, you are struggling to adjust to this. Mm-hmm. That just because your parents are staying calm, that just because you're safe, just because your house is standing – you have food. That doesn't mean that the uncertainty of it doesn't affect the children as well. That, that's right. And they, they, they want to understand what's going on in their world. And they <clears throat> certainly look to us, like you said, for that calmness. But they need, they need to really understand it from whatever age-appropriate way and, and level. We, um, I have a son named William, and we uh, were Zooming with him and, and his sweet family, and when his son Luke was talking to us and we were asking him, you know, how things are going and about what he felt about coronavirus. And he started giving us statistics. Now he's nine years old. He started telling us how you could get it. Like, like, um, and that we needed to wash our hands. I mean, he had it all down and he just kept saying that. <laughs> Over and over, we would even change subjects a little bit, and then he'd have more to say about it. So he obviously is processing. But what I thought was so uh, awesome is I said, hey, Lukey, how do you know so much about coronavirus? And he said, Siri. So (laughs) (laughs) so he's also been talking to his parents, obviously, about it as well. But, you know, he's been asking Siri for facts. And, you know, these kids, even though we tell them, yeah, it's going to be fine. They want to be heard. Right. They, they right. have feelings about it. And, right. um, and they, you know, it, it helps Luke to know what's going on and he it feels more in control of it. What are some things you've done with your kids that kind of help them adjust to the change? Well, so Eden, we talked before, she's a senior or was a senior. Uh, and it probably, as far as what COVID took away from them probably affected her the most because there were so many senior trip type things planned, graduation ceremonies, proms, um, looking forward to, you know, whether or not she could even go to college if, you know, campuses were going to be closed. So we kind of brainstormed some ideas of things that we could do and replace, you know, to replace those things that followed social distancing and state, you know, mandated orders. Mm-hmm. Um, but we brainstormed and we, we talked about it and, um, you know, a lot of times it was just, I've got a little seven year old named Graham who has some high anxieties and it was just finding some quiet time to sit down and ask him, you know, what he thinks about things. And a lot of stuff came out and mm-hmm. I was able to answer some questions I didn't even know he had. And, you know, so just making some time to talk one-on-one with your, with each kid to, just yeah. kind of see where they're at with with processing everything. You know, you don't always realize what your kid does and doesn't pick up on. Um, we That's right. We scheduled 
Oh, sorry. Sorry. We scheduled each night, each weeknight has a different family activity theme. Mm -hmm. So Monday nights, we actually talked, you know, with you and dad about doing grandparent game night over zoom. Mm -hmm. Tuesday was movie night. Wednesday was mine and Ben's kind of sort of date night as best as we could (laughs) manage out and just finding some place to park and talk, you know, on and on and on through, through the week so that the kids had something to count on every single day. And, and it was fun. And it really, until about May, we all were really enjoying the extra time. Now, by the end of May, we were all getting a little tired <laughs> of right, being, right. being at home. But. Well, and I think, you know, really to close this segment out, um, the key is how you're feeling your, your children are going to feel. You yeah. feel disassociated with your friends, your children are going to feel that way. Right. You feel uncertain in the world because of the changes, that's how your children are going to feel. And right. yes, everybody's house is on fire. Absolutely. Um, but we, we, can, we, can, we can look at this and we can work with our children and we can do things for ourselves that help us get through and accept what has happened. Yeah. Um, and then our next challenge is going to, to be how to balance, how to find balance in this new world. So how do we balance our world? You know, I have this picture of that, you know, that plate trick when you, the musician has, magician, magician. The sticks with the, the sticks, plate. yeah, with all the plates yeah, circling yeah. around. Yeah. But instead of plates, there's, there's hats. And, you know, when everything is changing like it is, um, we have to decide what matters most. I mean, women are having now to work from home around their children who are at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're having to homeschool those children. You know, the, the chores in the house intensify because we're all there. And often our husbands are, you know, if, if we're married, our, our spouses are there. And our kids feel like they need a brand new cut plate, bowl, spoon, knife, right. fork, with every single meal, a snack. So that, they, yeah, <laughs> they, they feel like, you know, school, summer vacation started in March. Right, right. And didn't, you know, and, and, and we have to figure out a way to have some sort of normalcy and structure. Right. Um, do you remember when um, you would tell me something as a child and, and I wouldn't let you do it and you would go, well, Jackie's mom said it was okay or my teacher said <laughs> I should do it. <laughs> well, those those parents that I should be able to. That's right. And do you remember what I would say to you? I remember it said like, well, they're, they're not the boss of me or they're not in charge. Yeah, of me, I, yeah. I would say they aren't the boss of me. Right. And I, I think, I think this really kind of applies. I think, you know, in, in this environment, there are so many places tugging and pulling and everybody thinks it's number one. School thinks it's number one. Work thinks it's number one. And everybody's telling the moms, Hey, I'm number one, and this is everything you have to do. And I think at some point, in order to put our life into balance and what's going to work for our family, mm-hmm. is to tell the world they are not the boss of you. They're not. And I would say, as a nod back to our previous episode, there are areas in life that all of your friends are going to thrive in, and they may mm-hmm. not be the same areas that you thrive in. That's right. So if you're they have different. Is- they have different priorities for their families as well. Exactly. I have a and friend that's fine who, too. Yeah, she made this beautiful homeschool schedule chart, and it was amazing, and she's amazing, and she stuck to it, and she got her kids through all the you know mm-hmm. homeschooling lessons or her version of it, and it was fantastic. That's not my strength. I had to work a little harder. I had improved in that strength, but my strength is fun, and I worked really hard to make sure my kids had – Fun, you know, fun to help kind of get us through. This. Yeah, that's right. And I think you know when when we can we, when we can cl- oh sorry when we can claim that the world is not the boss of us, we also so important to put our own individual right. stamp on what balance looks like in in our home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have we have this great opportunity to help our children learn how to balance and prioritize because mm-hmm. you know. They again, they think, oh, summer vacation on goes the screens. That's not going to work all day. There right. has to be, right. There has to be some sort of structure, and so we have to figure figure that out. Right. How to, how to do that? Right. What are some of the things you've done? 
Well, so I tried really hard to start out helping the kids keep up with whatever assignments were coming home from the teacher. And our, you know, our situation was a little bit different and that our school shut down in phases. We didn't know from the get go how long we were going to be out of school for. And so it was about the middle of April when our teachers were able to start giving the kids assignments again. Um, and I tried really hard to keep up with it, but it just, I just couldn't. So I, I came across this quote um, by Emily W. King. She's a doctor that I absolutely loved. And, and it, she talks about how, you know, parents cannot do everything. We can't be stay at home parents. We can't be working parents. We can't be teachers all at the same time. And she says, it's not hard because you're doing it wrong. It's hard because it's too much. Do the best you can when you have to pick because at some point you will choose connection. Pick playing a game over arguing about an academic assignment. Pick teaching your child to do laundry rather than feeling frustrated that they aren't helping. Pick laughing and snuggling and reminding them they are safe. If you are stressed, lower your expectations where you can and virtually reach out for social connection. We are in this together to stay well. That means mentally well too. I love so, that. Yeah, it brought me so much peace. And it was our fallback that when we okay. would try to do hard things, we would go as long as we could. And when that got to be a lot, our fallback was the connection, the doing something fun together, the, hey, let's not worry about this math assignment right now. Let's go outside and toss a ball around or run around on right. the play outside. Right. That was, that, that was what I fell back on was, was, figuring out what our family default was going to be and yeah. embracing it when things got hard and they got hard a lot. And that they're hard every single day because every single day is another day that you're trying to figure out how to manage this fire. You know, it's too bad that quote is so long because I really, really like it. And it's one of those things that should be embroidered on a pillow, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it on a pillow. Sit down and have a whole reading session just for that one. That's time. right. Just say it, just put it on your wall, like write it in chalk, whatever you have to do. Large wall. A very large wall. Uh, uh, okay. Say it well, every day to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I do have to be honest. So that seeking a connection wasn't our lowest default. <laughs> sure. When, when, when even that failed, because even that did fail sometimes, um, I would make our, my kids go on forced friendship walks and the neighborhood. <laughs> tell, tell us what a forced friendship walk is. Walk. They all had to go on a walk together. And I, I have old, older kids that can watch the younger ones. Um, and they were not allowed to come home until they could say nice things about each other. <laughs> how, how long were these friendship walks? Sometimes a solid half hour. A solid half hour. <laughs> and it, Depending on the kids, sometimes they had to say, you know, three things they learned about each other from this walk. I didn't actually really care. It was 15 to 20 minutes of alone time to reset and <laughs> I had to get ahead of this thing. Whatever, whatever had just exploded in our home, mentally, emotionally, physically sometimes, it gave me 15, 20 minutes to figure out how to get ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. And it gave them some time to get outside, get some good sunshine, and exactly. get the endorphins going. And th when they got tired of walking, I'm sure they just said, okay, here's, here's, here's what we're going to say about each other. <laughs> so the I love, said, just say works. something nice about me so That's we right. don't have to keep walking. Everybody come up with your own compliment and everybody <laughs> else say it. <laughs> fine. It's fine. If you can't get them all to love each other, then unite them with a common enemy. And I'm Exactly. Fine. Yeah, that's, that is, don't you think that's like the basic rule of motherhood, really? <laughs> like, it's, it's, a, it's a tool of the chest, that's for it sure. Is, it is. And, and I also think, too, in the uh, whole trying to figure out, you know, how to balance things, we can involve, involve our children. I know every summer we would have, you know, what the summer summit, and you probably remember oh, yeah. that. Yeah, the nerd in me loved that planning meeting. <laughs> my favorite thing about summer vacation was the summer summit because it involved planning and poster yeah. board and, and markers. There were schedules and stickers and all sorts of things. Yes. But I knew that the way to survive the summer 
would be to get the kids involved in in it. Yeah. Because me getting up every morning and saying, okay, guys, this is the schedule. This is what you have to do. These are your chores. Mm-hmm. I, that never, there aren't enough friendship walks for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so you all agreed. You all agreed on your chores. You all agreed on the activities. And we had library day and play day. And right. we had our summer yeah. uh, somewhat structured out. And so. Yeah. When, when kids feel like they could be part of the solution, not yeah. perfectly, but more often than not, they yeah. enjoy the process so much more. That, that's right. And so maybe, you know, have, we need to have a COVID-19 summit with our children and say, school is important. Play is important. My job is important. Your dad's job is important. Or, you know, all of these things are important. How do we, as a family, how are we going to all put these together and get right. their, right. get their participa- participation and agreement? Right. And so maybe that helps them. Part of finding balance is the, is, also, there's a major component in that is that we all need human interaction. And as we figure out this balancing act, that has to be a key part to it and one of the most challenging parts. So in a time of social distancing, how do we ourselves and how do we help our children achieve some sort of social humor inter- interaction um, during during this time, I mean, during a time when you're not supposed to have when you're not supposed to have any social, have social interaction. <laughs> and like I said, the first you know the beginning of the podcast, the first two weeks, yeah, we can do it. Uh, the next two weeks, I mean, you know, okay, a well, little harder, a little harder. harder. Enough is enough, and we yeah. are even the most introvert person needs that human reaction, and our children's lives. We would love for our children's lives to revolve around us, but it certainly it does not. It revolves around their friends. And what a difficult time to figure out how to do this for ourselves and for our kids. So let's, let's split that up. And let's first talk about um, some things that we can do for ourselves. So let's go back. So it started in March, the middle of March. March. Then schools closed until the middle of April. And then by the middle to end of April is when our governor said Virginia was on a stay-at-home order until June 10th. Okay. And that was my low point. And I, I cried. I, I kind of just – I went and sat in my van, locked the doors, and I cried for a hot five minutes just trying to process what that was going to be yeah. and what that was going to look like. So, so what did you do? What did you do to help yourself? Well, I drove to Chick-fil-A. And got myself a large Diet Coke, light ice, because otherwise you're getting ripped off. As, as you do. As, as I do. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I talked to people at the Marco Polo Group. I called you. I called sibling, you know, just trying mm-hmm. to find some help. And, and it, it did feel a little bit like asking a drowning man for a leg up. Right. <laughs> but... But you did. It was it was that desperate need for connection of mm-hmm. holy cow, life is feeling hard right now, mm-hmm. and that was huge. And you know, then we, um, you know, these these other women, we decided we would listen to podcasts, and then we would meet um, in socially distance approved ways. So we would, um, especially once our state entered into do, new phases. Um, meet in a parking lot that wasn't being used, sit six feet apart from each other in a big circle. And we talked about podcasts and we used that almost like a, like a pseudo book club. And it was so nice to have something to talk about that wasn't COVID related. And and, and let me just interject right there too. I think that's such a really good idea. And I think it's such a great point that there has to be something else to talk about. Yeah. Just a little bit of normal, um, and, you know, I would meet friends for a Diet Coke date. We would stay in our cars. We'd, you know, park six feet apart and just talk and just kind of sometimes mental dump of just, you know, getting our thoughts and feelings out there. Um, I took some time and wrote in my journal a little bit about how I was, you know, feeling. Wednesday nights became my self-care night. So they were date nights with my husband. I would get home and then everyone knew it's self 
it was self-care night for mom. Mm-hmm. I would take a bath. I'd listen to podcasts. I'd paint my nails, whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. to just feel like I was taking care of myself. So our kids, what have you done to help your kids interact with their friends? So I help them, encourage them to get on Marco Polo groups with their friends. But I would help them get on their Zoom meetings to say hi to their friends, to feel like life was a little bit normal. You know, the older kids that I could trust would follow social distancing orders um, when I'm not around. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while would kind of do the same thing where they would meet with a friend in a driveway where they could stay six feet apart, mm-hmm. bring a drink, chat. Um, as our social distancing orders are, we're going through other phases and things are loosening up a little bit. They can get outside a little bit more and do mm-hmm. some activities with friends that don't have them right up, you know, next to each other, next to each other. But um, they, and you know, one thing I did too for connection was the girls made my older three made fabric masks, um, which I thought was a great way to teach them to think about others. It connected them to their community because it was a community need that, you know, first inspired us to do these masks. They got to serve together. um, And, and it was, it was fun. We had a lot of fun. I do not sew. And in fact, my involvement kind of slowed down the process because <laughs> again, my type A personality just, you know, tried to run the show. And very quickly, my daughters were like, mom, we got this, we got this. But anyway, so we found opportunities to serve um, and connect with our community in ways like that. Um, we reached That's out cool. to friends that maybe we hadn't been as close to, or that we, you know, through, so we did like birthday parades or drop a treat, you know, a treat off on doorsteps, you know, mm-hmm. send a text to people that have been on our minds a lot that we haven't been close to. And, and I think that's great. I think that um, the social, social interaction just to be with our friends is important. Um, but also the, ser- the service part of that teaches our children that it doesn't matter, you know, regardless of what's going on in their lives, they can still, they can still give and they can still serve. Right. And the blessings and those good feels from serving also help them, give them a boost during a, during a pretty difficult time. As we're balancing our hats, I think a lot of times we worry that, are we making the right choices? Right. Do we have the right hats spinning up there? What are these long-term consequences going to be? What is right. the effect right. going to be on our children? And I would just like to say that our kids are going to be just fine you know we we worry that that they're not going to be fine we worry that that this is going to change their lives in some way that you know so the pressure is on us to be able to to choose the right things and do the right things and it will be interesting to see how things do change right yeah i mean will we ever want to shake somebody's hands again I will never, ever want to go somewhere that doesn't offer curbside pickup. I think that if there is a silver lining to come out of COVID, it is curbside pickup. And I will right. never go back. Never want to go back. You know, th- there will be some things, obviously, that come out of this that will never change. Right. Um, but this too shall pass. And um, it's okay. It's okay. There's been a lot of disappointment, um, a lot of missed things that we had planned, plans that had to be changed, new hats that had to be worn, um, schedules that had to be changed, all the things that we've talked about. But, you know, it. we also need to trust our children. Right. They can't handle disappointment. Yeah. We don't have to go around and make sure that they don't feel anything during this this time. Right. We can acknowledge right. those feelings of disappointment and loss and grief of normalcy. Right. Um, and they could come out, come out better, you know, for it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, they're, they're still going to graduate. They're going to go to college. They're going to get jobs. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe they won't figure out algebra. <laughs> because, I mean, because. <laughs> Not when they, not when your kids have me as the. (laughs) No, they would, no, my children, 
would have to, well, they have to get, would have to get math tutors because that's not going to happen in my home. <laughs> However, they'll, they'll, you know, these things we'll, we'll figure out. They're going to have families and they're going to talk about, you know, our, our parents, the best our parents could do us is that they had to walk 10 miles both ways uphill to go to school. Right. 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 I mean, our children are going to be able to talk about, you know, being involved in a pandemic and not being able to leave their house and having to go on friendship walks. I mean, they've got, they, they have stories, right? Right, right. <laughs> and so I think, you know, the, the, the opportunity that we have here as parents, as family, is to help our children. Our, we need to do this ourselves, too, but help our children See beyond what is happening today and imagine a bright future. Yeah. That just because things are uncomfortable now, maybe even some things, especially if your family has been more directly affected by COVID, that things could be bad now. It doesn't mean that there isn't hope in the future. That's right. That's right. And, you know, we've talked about your daughter, Eden, who this was her senior year and she missed her senior trips and her senior prom and her excuse me, and her graduation. And all of those things are disappointing. Mm-hmm. It, you know, that that's a special year. Absolutely. But she also did it with grace. Right. And right. she, you know, you had some good conversations with her. And for her graduation, we had a family Zoom graduation. Ceremony, yeah. And that was so fun. And she... Uh, we, you know, she walked across the, the family room <laughs> and got her fake diploma, just like she would have gotten a fake diploma at, at the real. Right. She got to give the valedictorian of homeschool. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, her sister said really nice things about her that she didn't have to pay them to say. <laughs> well, uh, between, mm-hmm. between you and me and all the listeners. <laughs> No, I know you are. Yeah, they, it was just really sweet and very heartfelt. And um, and then each of the families went around and talked about Eden and her accomplishments and mm-hmm. told her that we loved her. And I, I thought it, I mean. It was a lovely ceremony, and it yeah. probably meant more to her than a big formal yeah. thing. So, and, so I think, personal. and I think what COVID and this pandemic and so social distancing is teaching us all to do, I think is to creatively solve problems in our lives, maybe mm-hmm. better than we had been doing mm-hmm. because life relatively was running a little bit more smoothly. Mm-hmm. So the need to be as you know creative and right. Um, yeah. I, and I think that's a good thing to pass on to your kids. Oh, you've got a tough problem. There are ways to figure this out and they're going to come out of this maybe with some better problem solving and creative thinking capabilities. That is, yes. I mean, I say that with a lot of cross fingers and hope in the well, voice. I, yeah. I, I believe that to be true. I, I think that because the reality, this is a reality that there, there just isn't going to be those ceremonies and there, there were summer plans. There right. were camps there. I mean, the list is endless of all the things that did not get to happen. Right. And, um, but as they learn to problem solve, they they come up with a creative solution. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a that's a great skill, and it teaches them to not give up, to look to a brighter future, and look at their lives regardless of what is going on with, with optimism. Right. I think probably a really good way to end this little segment is I just want to I found a, there's a quote I. I uh, went to a writers, an online writers conference um, at, and the keynote speaker said, when you persevere, you return to the world stronger and braver. Hmm. And I think that's true. I think that yeah. is true for ourselves and it will be true for our children. Yeah. Um, it seems like forever that, and we don't think this is ever going to end, but it is. Right. We, we are going to, there, there's going to be solutions to this and we're all, and, and we will get back to some sort of a, of a normalcy and, and we will return to the world stronger and braver and better for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it for today's show. I hope something we said will help moms as they are trying on their different hats. 
And please remember that while we have some really important hats, we can determine which ones we wear, balancing life as it is now with those priorities that we set. We can instill in our children the idea that they can have some control over what is happening and find ways to build hope and resilience. As always, thanks for listening. You can check out my website on onemomtoanother.com. And as always, remember, you are doing better than you think.